Hey, future respiratory therapist. So this is probably going to be a video more geared towards second year respiratory therapy students, but uh, definitely a video that still everybody can learn from. So this actually comes from a case study. I mean, we're going to do kind of a case study here, and it comes from an actual ex-student of mine. And so McClinton, I appreciate you putting this up there. I appreciate you reaching out to me for insight on this because I want to help you understand exactly what went down in this case. Now, this was the ABG that was presented upon presentation to the ER. You have a pH of 6.88. 6.88, okay? So you're talking life-threatening pH here, okay? So that's the first thing you need to note right here, okay? The second thing you need to note is CO2 is 9.9. .9. Now, if you're wondering why that little point right there is so big, it's because I want to make sure you understand that there's a CO2 of 9.9, .9, not 99. O2 was 153. This was on room air. Now this right here tells you CO2 of 99 and an O2 of 153. This tells you that this patient is breathing their ass off. Okay? Because for room air, the only way you get a PaO2 of 153 is if your CO2 AO2, your CO2, okay, your arterial CO2 is super low, okay. This patient, this right here, tells you that your patient probably presented with Cushmall's respirations, okay. So you're thinking Cushmall's right here, and then you have a bicarb of 1.9. So what we have here is a severe metabolic acidosis who is trying to compensate with the elimination of their CO2. Okay, so this would be a partially, a partially compensated metabolic acidosis. Partially compensated because the CO2 is clearly out of range, but not enough to bring the pH into range. Okay, now the case study goes like this patient presented, this is the ABG we had, and what my initial thoughts were coming from the comment was I was thinking DKA, okay? So DKA, and you were thinking exactly correct, okay? This is textbook classic diabetic ketoacidosis, okay? So it goes from there to tell us that the anion gap, which is important because anytime you have a metabolic acidosis, students, listen, anytime you have a metabolic acidosis, you have to ask yourself, what is going on? Have I lost an excessive amount of bicarb, like out of the body, or have I gained a large amount of non-volatile acids? That's the question you have to ask. And to get that answer, you have to calculate your anion gap. So A gap stands for anion gap, okay? This person's anion gap equaled 41, okay? Now, depending on where you work and what textbooks you look at, Typical anion gap normal range is 8 to 16. Some places say greater than 14 is abnormal. It doesn't matter. When you get into the high teens on an anion gap, you're talking about a gaining of non-volatile acids. So you're thinking lactic acidosis, ketoacidosis, to name two of the bigger ones. Okay. Now, this person's anion gap is 41. So we definitely have an increase in our anion gap, which means we have an increase in our non-volatile acids. Now, what does this mean to you? This means that giving bicarb is not the answer to this person's problem. Okay? So the first thing you need to understand is that giving bicarb is not the answer to all metabolic acidosis problems. And in this case, giving bicarb would not fix the problem. Okay? 
The problem here is most likely DKA, which is an increase in ketones. This is a diabetic patient that is either non-compliant or temporarily non-compliant or whatever the case may be. They have an increase in ketones and we as a healthcare team need to give them insulin and fluids to help deal with these ketones. Okay, period. That's the solution to the problem. Now, the case study goes on from the comment I received to say my thoughts were that when we put this person on the mechanical ventilator, which was the correct move because they're about to die. Okay, 6.88. This person is going to die unless we intervene. So mechanical ventilation is exactly correct. Now, you're thinking, McClinton, of we need to slow this person's breathing down, I need to hypoventilate this patient, is, is your one error in your thinking, okay? Because if you hypoventilate this patient, then your CO2 is going to go up. So let's take this patient, let, 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 let's hypoventilate. Let's get this patient's CO2 back in the normal range. Well, you have to understand that you have a ginormous metabolic acidosis. So this bicarb of 1.9 is still a bicarb of 1.9. So if you allow your CO2 to go up to 35 or 40, then your pH is even going to go further south. You're going to send this person to 6.5, 6.6, 6.4. You're going to send them even further in to acidosis. So the move that was made, which was to put them on the ventilator at their current rate and continue to allow them to hyperventilate, okay, a rate of 30, <clears throat> excuse me, with a tidal volume of 500 gives you a minute ventilation of 15. And that continues to keep this CO2 down, which helps to continue to compensate for this acidotic pH. Because if you don't, and the CO2 goes up, you allow this to go up, then this pH goes down. Okay? So you don't want to hypoventilate this patient. You want to continue to hyperventilate them even after on mechanical ventilation. That will help to compensate. As the pH comes up, when as you fix the metabolic problem, then you can start cutting back on the rate and the minute ventilation to allow the CO2 to rise in conjunction with the improving pH. Okay, that's the correct move. Okay, now what you said was that I thought DKA. And so I was thinking there's no need to give bicarb. But what did they do? They gave six amps of bicarb. Now the only way I can make this make sense because theoretically everything says don't give this patient bicarb, just treat the ketones, right? You treat the ketones, you treat the metabolic acidosis, and all of this will correct itself and we can eventually get this person off the ventilator. The only thing I can think of when you tell me that they gave six amps of bicarb is that they thought acutely, meaning right now, this person is going to die or have long-lasting effects from the severe acidosis. So let's at least fix the body. Let's at least trick the body into think that the acidosis is okay to relieve the effects of that. So the six amps of bicarb that were given were most likely given to bring this up to a level sustainable with life while we gave the insulin and the fluids and dealt with the real problem, which was the DKA. Okay? Because if not, you may be, you <laughs> this patient may not even survive. Okay? So... That's my train of thought on the six amps of bicarb. That's my train of thoughts on the, I think we need to hypoventilate. No, you don't. You need to continue hyperventilating to keep this pH 
down. I mean, to the point it is, not down, but up. It's down right now, but you, but the only reason it's 6.88 and not 6.5 is because the CO2 is 9.9. .9. So continue to hyperventilate this patient, okay? And continue to understand that when you have an increased anion gap, the answer to the problem isn't to give bicarb. DKA was the 100% correct train of thought, okay? And if it wasn't DKA, then please let me know what it was, okay? But I imagine this was DKA. And I imagine after they left your hands, they went into some sort of insulin protocol to where they fixed the real problem, which is the buildup of ketones due to the lack of the liver creating uh, effective insulin. And thus, we had a patient present like this. Okay, McClinton. So everything you were thinking was on point other than the hypoventilation standpoint. And when it comes to that, just remember, keep compensating for the body. So for this case, you needed to keep hyperventilating, which is what ultimately you did. So congratulations on that. Okay. So I'd love to hear the outcome of this. I would also love to hear your thoughts on it, if this makes sense, and if this helps clarify this for you for any reason, okay? The six sample of bicarb that were given were to just buy some time. Fix this, put a Band-Aid on this. Th that doesn't fix the problem, but it fixes the life-threatening pH of this patient, okay? Leave me some comments, would love to respond to them. Best wishes.